Yep. To be consistently accurate with a catapult takes a lot of skill. To be able to hunt with a catapult is a completely different steel or lead oh. ball game. I like steel for pheasants, things like that. They've got a larger surface area, so they create more damage as they go through. Um, the lead, I like 10mm lead for squirrels, and I like 11mm lead for squirrels. So if it's a close range squirrel, I'll, I'll drill it with an 11mm lead. Um, a bit further, I'll use the 10mm lead, because obviously it's less drop. On a nippy December morning, we join Wayne and his friend Matt Lower. They sort of know each other from the clay shooting scene, but it's the catapult shooting that's brought them together. Matt's invited Mr. Catishack for a mooch around his local permission in Sussex. Uh, so, Mr. Martin, <laughs> what are we up to today? Well, we've got a, bit, a fair bit to do today. Uh, we've got some barns to start off with. There should be some ferals in around here. We're going to have some pheasants, hopefully, fingers crossed, on the outskirts of the land. Plus, we've got a few woods to look through for some squirrels. I was talking through with Matt about a month ago, and we had our face masks on. And uh, obviously, got it with me today. Walking through, you could literally walk up the squirrels five, ten meters with the face mask, with your cover. They just took literally no notice of you. So we're hoping to try and replicate that today. So fingers crossed, we can get some good squirrel shooting. The bag has the potential to be rich and varied. We start with the relatively easy stuff, a wander around the barns looking for ferals. Start. Yeah, very good start. One down, just at the base of his neck. A closer range in the barn, so we're using 11mm lead on that one. And uh, as you see, he dropped very well. Well, as the bird's been sat on the on the rafter like this, another reason why I use bigger ammo. You can see it's just caught the edge of its wingtip as it's gone up through. So the angle it was sat at, it's gone boom, up, just up through. It's sat obviously like this. And we've gone in just here. It's just just clipped the edge of its wing. Yeah, there we go. Clipped the edge of its wing as it's gone up through. It's a start. And before we head off around the margins looking for pheasants, rabbits and squirrels, Wayne has a tip. Another reason why we'll I carry the chalk is when you obviously pick up something you've shot and you get blood on your fingers, your fingers become sticky and you can't hold the pouch properly. So chalk just dries your hands back out so you can get a better grip on the pouch again. Since our last film, Wayne has invested in a new hike thermal, taking advantage of the deal Shooting Sports UK offered through us. There are moments there, when it really three. pays off, especially with squirrels. There's another one over there. We end up back at the farmyard. This time the shot is high. Gave it a bit too much lift. Do you think you naturally lift anyway just because you're worried about the, the, the roof? Definitely. Last time we were down on Crowey's farm, he had some new new faces on his shed and there's a, a, a pigeon at the top and uh, I couldn't stop myself aiming high because I was worried about damaging his shed but yeah the last thing you want to do is obviously smash a tile so yeah you can naturally kind of aim a bit give it a bit more you know and also give it a bit too much we now head across the farm there is wildlife everywhere but nothing we want sticks around for long after an hour we get within range of a hen pheasant Yes. Shot. Away, but you can see she's completely dead, neck's completely broken in half. Ball straight through the centre of the neck. Great shot. Thank you. Wow. Very pleased with that. Brilliant. Spot on. 
Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> happy now. Very happy now. We Very happy. That. Oh, we did work for that. Well, we come all, all through. I don't know how much of it you filmed. All through this field, all through this brush here, all the way along the fence line, they kept their distance 30, 40, 50 yards in front of us. And uh, coming over the brow of that hill, we managed to close the distance in on a little bit. That was probably 30, 35 yards. Um, and she was the only one that was left out of the pack, just lagging a bit behind. Crack. Took it out clean. Well pleased. Is that 11 mil lead? 11 mil steel. Oh, steel, yeah. Steel, yeah. Beautiful bird. Say so they flip and flap around, but as you can see, she's completely, yeah, you know, didn't know what hit her. Very happy. Proper hunt. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, it was a proper hunt. They, they, they didn't let us get anywhere near them. You know, we come into the field 50, 60 yards, they, they were up on their toes, they were, they were going. So we managed to close it in, like I say, and uh, yes. yeah, nailed it. Sure. Perfect. I'm not putting it in the catty shot bag, though. <laughs> That's got to keep clean. <laughs> This is my deer stalking thing anyhow. Just makes it looks like I've got two stone on me though. More than, yeah, <laughs> more than what I had. With something for the table, Wayne and Matt turned their attention to squirrels. The headgear proved successful last time, but it can throw the accuracy. So I've had to, I've had to aim a tiny bit to the right, because obviously with the thickness of this, it's bringing my hand slightly away from my face. So it's making my shot go slightly left. So I'm just having to aim slightly right to bring my shot round straight again. Okay. You look like something out of Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was me rum. Let's go and stick another one on that leaf. Just underneath it, perfect line. So I'm just slightly off to the right with my reference point. Matt shoots a different style to Wayne. You don't shoot one of his frames. I've just That's been outrageous. well. I've just been given one, and it's a clipped one, so I will be I will be using it. But, but using, um, tell me about the style then. You, what's your style compared to Wayne's? Uh, basically, so it's over the top. So I draw back into my ear, look down, and then I use that little dot. That's actually off of an archery. That's a bow and arrow. Um, one of the little sights, and then I've just can't see it there. Can't they? Adapted adapted it so when i look over all i can see is a little perfect little dot so when you pull down i don't know where the best is to see it you can actually see just a little dot so what's your frame uh pr3 it's a palm swell just using the catishat band and the pouches as i say these are really good i really rate them Even with the headgear, the squirrels are just not sitting, but they are everywhere. As we continue through the chestnut wood, Wayne saves the best shot till last. Through the thermal, we spot a squirrel pressed yeah. tight up against the trunk. Oh, he's edging round as I'm edging round. I just see a little piece of him. Oh, that's it. He's about to drop. There he goes. Done. What a shot. <laughs> Thank you. I could literally just see a tiny piece of it. Oh, oh, brilliant. Thank you, mate. Is there? We'll have to have a look at him in a sec. Ah, oh, perfect. You could see, what, a centimetre and a half or something? Yeah, it was t a tiny, tiny amount. That's it, done. Wow. You pulled out another squirrel shot for us, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, um, ch chuffed a bit. Chuffed a bit. We've had a great day. Oh, absolutely over the moon. Uh, I'm pleased, obviously, we've got you down here, you and Charlie. Do a ton of work for field sports promoting the sport getting you down here getting you out early in the morning <laughs> do you know what i mean and then and then not delivering i'd feel bad but um we've had some we've got some great footage we've got some great hunting um on film so really pleased and that's that's just wrapped the day up for me over the moon that's the first time i've ever pierced the skin on a squirrel really yep gosh they are tough there's a massive great big hole where my finger is so i see the gone inside I think it's, yeah, I think it's gone inside. 
And again, this is, a, this is why I use big ammo. If you hit that in the body with a 9.5 steel, something like that, or, you know, any sort of steel really, it's just an injured animal. That's an 11 millimeter lead, stone dead. You know, it's, it's a heart and lung shot. What an incredible shot oh, and the perfect way to finish it. our morning. For more information about Caddyshack and to order yourself a perfect stocking filler, go to caddyshack.co.uk.